Welcome to our online community. We do pray that wherever you are listening from, that you're able to take the time to sit still and hear from God's Word today. We come to you from Highlands Presbyterian Church. We also ask that you give us feedback on our online services. Enjoy the message for today. Jesus, try to keep up. At this point, 
most of us are like, yes, I'm going to need some ID. Are you actually God? Because this is a pretty ridiculous question. The crippled guy is as confused as we are. Notice at this point that he still doesn't have a name. Right? Scripture refers to him as a certain man, the invalid, and finally, the sick man. So this no name, disabled fellow, sort of mumbles some feeble excuse about why he hasn't made it into the water in time. Jesus basically dismisses this response. His res- yeah, he, he just ignores his response completely and simply says, and it's like in my mind as I'm reading the scripture, I can see just kind of taking a, a deep breath, sort of rise, pick up your mat and go. Right? And the man is healed. As simple as that. So what's really going on here? Jesus asks a seemingly dumb question because I think he actually wants to hear the words. He wants us to say, I want to be healed. I want to be well. I want whatever it is. He wants to feel our response and know that we actually believe in him. Jesus wants us to, wants to hear us say the words and he wants to know that we believe that he is able. So remember that the crippled guy doesn't give him a direct answer. He mumbles some excuse. And I think that's why Jesus treats him so roughly from the beginning. He knows the quality or the state of the man's heart before he even approaches him. So Jesus is shocked with him because he knows that the guy doesn't really believe that healing is even available. When you analyze the excuse, you realize that the real belief that this guy is carrying don't worry, guys. They have <laughs> when you analyze this excuse, you realize that that is not his physical infirm that is this guy's greatest wound. But he's carrying something much deeper, something more, much more powerful in taking him out and locking him and shackling him to this place of brokenness. And that is a deep spiritual wound or disappointment. It is a crippled man's paralyzed heart that Jesus is most concerned with, not his legs. Disappointment is the single greatest tool that the enemy has to cripple you, to rob you of your destiny, to take you out and to deaden your desires for the things that God has put inside you that burn within you, that wake you up early in the morning when there's, before the noise of the world clouds it out, that you long to do and to be those things and that person. Those desires came from the heart of God. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. He is the God of our desires. Desire reveals desire. He has placed those desires in us to draw us in to the place where He he needs us to go. So what do you love to do? What were you born to do? Repeatedly do and do well. That's who you are. And design determines destiny. You were made to play an irreplaceable role in history, his story. So in John 5, Jesus circles back around and finds this guy in in, in verse 14. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. Now, that's a bizarre little thing to say to someone that you just hear. See, you are one. Well. I love that they capture the word see in the beginning of that sentence. It changes the whole message of what he's saying. See, it's like, do you believe now? Finally, can, can, you, can you see now? You are here. And so I don't know how they captured this, but John was obviously following Jesus around with his iPhone, and he was kind of taking notes, or he could maybe recorded a voice memo, but somehow he captured the word see, and it's a critical word. It's vital to the understanding of what's going on here. At the beginning of Jesus, of Jesus the second meeting with this guy, he, he, he's trying to say to him, can you see now what's really going on? And so this is significant because it tells us that Jesus knows what no one else understood, including us, that homeboy didn't actually believe that he would ever be healed. Because he had given up hope 
because of all of his disappointment. Remember back to that excuse? Uh, I have no one to help me when, when the word is stirred. I have no one to take me until when I get onto the pit and someone help. Disappointment. And so he's given up hope. I have no one to help me. So when I get up and other goes down before me. I'm from Zimbabwe. Uh, I was wiped out by Mugabe Tsunami. My boss, my husband. Uh, oh, COVID. What dreams have you given up on because of the terrible disappointment that we have all faced? And how do you think that might be affecting your desires and your understanding of your design and your destiny? There's, a, there's another story, a blind man in Mark 10, who responds in a completely different way. And I think that this is a model for us from, from verse 46. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd we leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, he's already got a name. First verse, he's got a name. The other guy, through 14 verses, we never got a name. This guy, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting on the roadside, begging. He's a blind beggar on the side of the road. Very much the same kind of context, situation as the other fellow, crippled, blind, beside the pool of Bethesda. So he's begging and he's waiting and he hears that the son of that, that Jesus of Nazareth is walking past. He begins to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many people rebuked him, told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So he called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. So they called, and so they took the blind man to Jesus. Jesus asked him the same question. What do you want me to do for you? Again, it's obvious to everyone else that's there. This is a blind man who's crying out beside the road, calling, help me, help me, begging for, for money. And Jesus asked this most ridiculous question. What do you want? Instantly, the man says, Rabbi, I want to see and Jesus says, go, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So you see, Jesus, from the outset, Jesus treats Bart very differently. His name is written in the book of life. He is made famous for the rest of human history. We can see from the get-go that Bartimaeus believes in Jesus. And he is commanded and told that his faith has made him well. See, the other guy didn't have faith. See, you are well. He had to be proved to him that Jesus could heal. This guy, straight away, go. Your faith has healed you. So your desires are good. Believe in the one who placed those desires in the depths of your soul. If God is asking you today, what do you want? Can you even respond without making an excuse, without first giving some context or some background? Oh, you don't understand what happened to me. Can you verbalize what is on your heart, who you believe that you are? What you would love to do, what you were born to do, what you repeatedly do, and do well. Don't be taken out by disappointment any, any, anymore. Stop sinning. Jesus calls it sin. See, you are here. Stop sinning. Philippians 2 says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you a longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for His good pleasure. Design reveals design. Design determines destiny. I believe Jesus is saying to us all today, what do you want? Should we answer him? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the hero of our story. Thank you, God, that we belong to you. Thank you, Father, for giving us an irreplaceable role to play in your story for your glory, for your name, and for your renown. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we've been chosen. We've been called by you. Your fingerprints are all over us. 
We belong to you, God. So we stand today at our full height and we declare our allegiance to you, God. As you lead us into the great battle in the age of, that we live in, the final age for the hearts of humanity, would you lead us as our mighty warrior, the king of angel armies, Thank you for anointing us and equipping us and calling us to join you in this great adventure that is unfolding. Thank you, Lord God, for the myriad of skills and talents and abilities that you've poured out amongst your people. I pray that you enthuse us and inspire us by your power and your truth. Let us be speakers of truth and life to all mankind. I pray that we would dive into the sphere where you have placed us Take up the assignment that you have written for us into the annals of history and let us play our parts to the best of our ability, standing at our, at our full height for your glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that each man and woman, each child, each family that is represented here today has a role to play in your story. I thank you for the gifts that you've poured out so lavishly into our lives to equip us and enable us to be part of your solution to the brokenness, to the hurting, and to the healing that is required for this nation. I pray, Lord God, that you would stir up in us a passion for your name, that we will believe in you, that we will believe that healing is available, that newness is available, that restoration is at the center of your plan for our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for the cross of Christ. We apply the fullness of the healing and the redemption, the restoration that is available through the blood of Jesus, through the brokenness of the body of Christ that was for the forgiveness of our sins. We confess that we are all sinners. We have fallen short of the glory of God. We are in need of a Savior. Thank you, Lord God, for paying that price and making a way for us to receive you as the Lord and Savior, the master of our lives. We receive that gift with thanks. Thank you that it is a free gift. We can never earn it. We can never do anything to repay it. We simply have to believe and receive from you. We receive that new life when we give a total claim to every aspect of our lives today, Lord God. Seal us in the finished work of the cross of Christ, we pray. As we step forward into newness, in wholeness, to take our place, to stand at our full height for your glory. Have your way in us, we pray, Lord Jesus. We want to be well. We want to be healed. We want to be whole. We want our marriages to thrive. We want our marriages to be restored in you. We want our parenting to be redeemed in you. We want our children to be alive to God, dead to sin. We want to become a new creation, Lord Jesus, and that is the offer. So we receive it with thanks, and we give the cross total claim to every aspect of our lives, our work, our walk, our families, our homes, all of our domain. We seal in the blood of Christ. And we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that hope is available. Restore our disappointments and heal our broken hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that you would have a great week knowing that God your Father is with you every step of the way.